I played 100 days on Stardew Valley Beach Farm and it turned out nothing like I expected. I want to get right into the action, but just so you know, here were the four rules I made for myself. I've never completed the community center in the first year before, so I wanted to complete it in 100 days and I remixed the bundles for an extra challenge. I also forgot to select the completable in first year, so will we be able to do it? Well, I guess we'll find out. I reduced the profit margin so that I could see what that was like. So I decided instead of a million, let's do 750,000 earned in the first 100 days. Number three, I wanted to see if I could get all my skills to level 10. Number four, I wanted to be pretty antisocial. I had this idea that this character was like a too cool for school surfer dude that was way too good for Pelican Town or so we thought. So we'll see what happens with that. And I'll talk about that a little later in the video. I was really excited to see what happened because I've never played the beach farm before and I knew honestly nothing about it. So let's find out what happens when you take somebody new to the beach farm and play 100 days of Stardew Valley. Here we go. On day one, I spent some time exploring the farm since, as I mentioned, I didn't really know what this layout even was. Then I did some foraging because I wanted to hit level one foraging overnight. And then, of course, I planted my parsnips. I ended up finding some mixed seeds, so I planted those as well. I spent the rest of the day meeting some of the townspeople, hunting for more forage goods, and overnight, I ended up hitting level one foraging. Thank goodness. On day two, I bought some more seeds. Uh, one other thing that I forgot to mention is actually that I made it a rule for myself that I could not check the Stardew Wiki if I didn't know if a crop was profitable, uh, where to find fish, things like that, because I wanted to try and get as far as I could without using that resource because I usually reference it all the time. So I bought some kale seeds. I think I remember that they were profitable, planted those on the farm and watered all my crops for the day. Then I decided to go get the fishing rod from the beach and spend the rest of the day foraging, making field snacks to keep me going till late at night, and then finished off the day fishing and selling what I found. Day three, the guaranteed rain day, I fished for, well, as long as I could tolerate it, and I kept missing the fish, as you can see here, so I just cut that out around 6 or 7 p.m. and spent the rest of the day shaking trees around my farm, trying to find the ingredients for field snacks for the next day. And then on day four, I repaired the bridge so that I could collect some of the beachwares. And then I planted some more seeds that I bought with the money that I had collected so far. Day five, I adopted a very cute little doggy, but for some reason I named it Wishbone and I'm still not sure why I did that. In a day of questionable decisions, I also decided to buy a peach from the traveling cart. What? Also learn something new about the beach farm. You can find shipwreck packages. I found five cherry bombs, which is totally awesome. So I rushed right over to the mines. In the mines, I found a club, which I have really mixed feelings about, and you'll see why a little bit later in the video. But then I also got to level 10, which is awesome. And I got a boots. So all in all, it was a successful day. Also hit level one farming. On day six, I broke open some geos, donated them to the museum, which rewarded me with some cauliflower, which I planted immediately, and then crafted a furnace for some strange reason. I didn't even end up using it that day, but at least I have a furnace. For day seven, I thought I was going to complete my first bundle and then realized r -r 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 remix. Nope, not today. So then I spent the rest of the day in the mine since it was raining and earned level one combat. It rained again on day eight, so I bought some more kale seeds and upgraded my backpack, and then I actually completed my first bundle. I spent the rest of the day in the mines. I ended up getting to level 20, which is awesome, but then I didn't have enough time or energy to plant my spring seeds, so that would have to wait until tomorrow. Day nine, I planted and watered my spring seeds, and then I finally bumped into Leah, which completed my Meet the Villagers quest. Day 10, even more rain, so I spent the most of the day in the mines and got attacked by a lot of bugs, and then I did reach level 30, saw that it was the dark levels next, said nope, and that was it for me for the day. The next day after attending to my crops, I checked out the request board. Luckily enough, I had actually caught a flounder on one of the rainy days, so I knew this was a slam dunk. I also had an amethyst kicking around, so I decided to not only complete the request for Abigail, but also complete another quest, giving her a gift. So I scored some major points today. To make it a trifecta, I found Robin's axe and delivered that to her on the same day. 
also decided to crack some more geodes, donate them to the museum, and then I picked up some melons, which is setting me up great for summer. Day 11, I did some monotonous tasks like tending to my crops, fishing, foraging, and just cleaning up the farm, but I did happen to craft a couple tappers and put them to work right away. Decided to go to the egg festival because I do like the hat that you win, so secured that. I also bought a bunch of strawberries because I heard in the comments of my other videos that strawberries are the way to go, so I planted them and well, we'll see what happens with them if I get to harvest or not. Day 14, it was raining, so I decided I probably need to face my fears and go to the mines. I did bring a torch or two with me because, yes, I am that afraid of the dark. It was also giving me Diablo vibes in the mines, and I recently read an article where Concerned Ape said he was inspired by Diablo for the combat portion of the game so now it's all making a lot of sense luckily i made it through to level 40 and obtained a slingshot on day 15 i had some money that i made from all the kale that i bought so i reinvested it into potato seeds and planted those as well as some flowers just in case i needed them for quests i then cracked open some geodes donated this stuff to the museum and I ended up getting star fruit seeds as a reward. Day 16 we had rain again. I also had quite a big harvest so I was really excited for that. I didn't want to wait overnight to collect my money because I wanted to see where I was at to buy the rest of my seeds for the season so I ended up going to Pierre's and selling them right then and there. Then I decided I was going to spend the rest of the day in the mines and I got a little too greedy and I almost died and then I stayed a little too late and then I almost passed out. I got a little too close for comfort, but luckily it all ended okay. Now we're on day 17 and I'm really starting to wonder, am I going to hit the record for most rainy days in the first spring? Because it seems like it's raining almost every day. So anyways, I made sure Robin started on my silo because I wanted to start cutting my grass and collecting hay for my future animals. Then I spent all day in the mines and I mentioned that club earlier. I started using that one a little bit and then I found this better club and it was by far the strongest weapon I had and it gets me into a little bit of trouble later because it's so slow to attack but I did manage to reach level 55 in the mines. Day 18 we're back to the sunshine and I got to harvest quite a few cauliflowers which provided a much needed boost to my income and then finished up harvesting as many salmon berries as I could. My silo was also finished being built so I finally got to start collecting hay. So satisfying. Also found out it was Pam's birthday. Stuck up surfer guy thought I need a friend so he picked Pam. I also decided to plant some more potatoes so that I could keep that farming income coming in. On day 19, I went to build a coop and then realized I didn't have enough gold. So my mission for the rest of the day was to forage, fish, and do whatever I could to make some more money. Now on to day 20, none of my crops were really ready to harvest except for my green beans. So I grabbed some of those and then headed to the mines for the day. I made it to level 60 and ended up catching a ghost fish, which I thought I needed for a bundle, but I actually didn't. I was also tired of stumbling around in the dark. I had some iron bars ready, plus I got five solar essence, so I decided to craft a glow ring much better. Day 21, I harvested some potatoes and noticed that my strawberries were finally ready to harvest, which is going to give me some much needed income. So I harvested and watered my crops, and then I decided to head to the mines. When I got to the mines, I got to level 65, which was pretty good. Day 22 was pretty awesome. I ended up finishing my crab pot bundle, which was perfect because then I actually got some crab pots to start passively increasing my fishing skill. I also put a lot of things I needed for my other bundles together. So I'm really close to finishing a lot of other bundles. So it kind of gave me a plan of what to focus on next. When I got back to the farm, I immediately put my crab pots to work and then I decided to head over to Robin's and finally build the coop because I have enough money for it. The placement of this coop ends up being a little bit of shambles for me, but we will see what happens with that in just a few days. I called it a pretty early night today, but I did hit level five farming. And as you can see, I debated really heavily which one I should go with, but I figured since farming is usually a pretty profitable option, that's the one I ended up going with. On day 23, I took care of things around the farm, watered my crops, uh, put my 
crab pots in action again with some bait and then I went and dropped off my axe to upgrade to copper. After that I headed to the mines for the day and I ended up getting to level 75. Then on my way home I got to see one of my favorite cutscenes ever, the Linus cutscene, so I definitely took my time to enjoy that. Then I just sorted out what I had gathered from the mines for the day and called it a night. Day 24 started out awesome. I took care of all my crops, including a really big harvest of potatoes, so I was really happy about that. Then I decided to head to the community center where I completed one of my bundles in the boiler room, which gave me a furnace, which is very handy because I was operating with just one furnace up until this time. Then it was time for the spring dance, and let me tell you, I realized that I realized I was kind of being that antisocial person that thought they were a little bit too good for Pelican Town. I hadn't really made any connections with anyone yet. As you can see, I asked four different people if they wanted to dance, and they all said no. What I want to know from you in the comments is, are you interested in the next part of the series, the 100 to 200 days, if I was going to make it more of a narrative and a story. Are you into that or do you just want to see like how the farm grows? So the next day after the festival, I ended up getting a visit from Demetrius and I had the choice between the mushroom cave or the bat fruit cave. And this is the first time I've ever chosen the fruit bat. So I'm kind of excited to see how that goes. I also had my second harvest of strawberries, which is amazing. I know earlier in the video I said, will we get a second one? And that's because I got confused on the last day. I thought there would be a harvest and there wasn't. So I thought I only had got one, but this confirms it video proof. We did get two harvests as expected. That is awesome. After that, I went and picked up my ax from Clint and then I dropped off my pickaxe to upgrade that. To keep things rolling, I also bought the fiberglass rod from Willy so that I could start really leveling up my fishing skill because I knew that was a little bit lacking, especially since I can't visit the mines for the next few days, thought might as well start doing some fishing. When I went to bed, I ended up hitting level 5 foraging, so the profession I chose was of course forester because wood is just so important and having more of it is never a bad thing. Now we're on day 26, I visited Marnie and I bought two cute little chickens and made sure to feed them and all I have to say about that is I am glad that I gave them two days worth of food on this very first day. I also emptied out my entire silo now that my coop is done so that I could start collecting even more hay. The rest of the day was pretty boring. I just spent time chopping down trees, eating field snacks to replenish my energy and collecting as much wood as possible for my future construction projects. Okay, this is pain. I realized after I had already saved over day 27 that I did not hit the record button. So I do not have the footage from the most chaotic day ever. So before I recap day 28, I'm going to tell you exactly what happened on day 27. It was raining and I saw that it was going to rain this next day. So I thought, wow, this is the perfect day to upgrade my watering can. So I dropped off my watering can and then realized I had spent all my money and I'm supposed to be buying seeds the next day. So I basically scampered around the mines and fished all day and I only made about a thousand gold. So that brings us to today, the 28th, where I was determined to make as much money as I could before summer one. So as you can see on the 28th, I was still scampering around the map uh, ended up going to the mines because I thought that could be my most profitable since I was pretty far in the mines, got to level 80 and got the firewalker boots and found quite a few things I could sell overnight to try to get at least a little bit of gold to start off my summer off right because I am nowhere near my gold goal which was 750,000 but here's where things really start to turn around for me. I sold what I could, went to sleep, and I did hit level 5 mining, and I've never actually chosen the geologist profession before, and I thought that would be a really good way to get some early game income if I could get double gems, so that's what I went with. 1300 gold for this day, not bad. 
Now you know why the title says spring was chaotic, because it really did not go at all as I hoped it to, but that's okay. New season, new motto, let's get this production going and so we can get as far as we can. Luckily, summer gets off to a much better start. I till as much soil as possible, even though I don't have probably that much money for seeds, I just want to get everything ready so that I can start planting as many crops as possible. I already have some melon and starfruit seeds, so let's go. As soon as I walk outside my farm, I also see almost everything I need for my summer foraging bundle. So that is an awesome thing to knock off my list so I can get even more seeds to plant. I actually got quite a few seeds. I planted my star fruit. I had melon, blueberries, corn, radish, peppers, tomatoes, pretty much everything I needed for my bundles. So I decided to plant it all and then get to work on making some more money to go buy even more seeds. Then I decided to stop in and check on my chickens. They're finally grown up and they started producing eggs, which is very good timing because again, I'm now on a mission to make this farm really successful. I ended the day with some foraging and as you can see from my inventory, I had some pretty decent outcomes. So I'm going to sell everything, head to bed and start the next day. Day 30, I bought a little bit more of melon, blueberry and radish seeds, planted them all and then I headed over to the community center because I had enough to finish my summer foraging bundle. I hightailed it back to the farm and ended up planting all those seeds as well. Day 31, after watering my crops, I decided to go to the mines and showcase, well, not my best combat skills, as you can see here. But on the upside, I did find double emeralds and a big pile of gold ores. Unfortunately, that is where my good luck ended. I got to level 84 and I always like finishing on 85 or 90, something like that, because then you get to the next elevator level. But I ran into a bunch of bats. I ran out of food. I didn't have enough for a staircase. So I thought, oh, I'll just finish these bats off, get to level 85, no problem. I think I'm almost done clearing the bats, but then I get the darkness of doom. So I decide I am way too low health. I just leave and unfortunately don't get to level 85. We pick back up on day 32 and this is where I decide to start the day off and crack some geodes, donate what I found to the museum. And then it's time to get planting some more crops and I am going to uh, finally utilize sprinklers. I have the ingredients for it. I've unlocked the recipe. I'm very excited. So we're ready to rock here. I am getting everything ready to plant my seeds in the formation that I need for the sprinklers. Then I decide to craft my sprinklers and let's get these laid. Ouch. This is such pain. So I just learned something new about the beach farm that you cannot use sprinklers in, well, anywhere except the greenhouse. So I am so upset at this point and I realized that this is such a waste of time and energy. Yes, I can still water them manually, but I decided just to go to bed at about 6 p.m. because I was so frustrated that I did not know this. Luckily, this story does have a redemption arc, but we're not quite there yet. So I started the day obviously tending to my crops and whatnot. Then I decided to go to the mines to see if I could get a little bit further in that and have better luck there. I'm still using that slow club because it is my strongest weapon at this point and the enemies are getting pretty strong. So my other swords were not gonna cut it. So things are going okay, but then, this happens. I haven't actually got to zero HP in Stardew Valley for a very long time because I'm usually pretty good at keeping myself fed and killing enemies or at least running away. But anyways, Maru finds me, what an angel. And then uh, I ended up losing only an Omni Geode, so I can live with that. So I decided to head to the spa, recover a little bit, and then reset. This is where the redemption arc truly starts. I ended up spending the rest of the day uh, farm clearing, and this is where I discovered there is land that you can use sprinklers. So I was really happy about that. But then my next problem is that I need a steel axe but that is a problem I know I can get through so I'm feeling way better and now it's time to get this land into production and let's get it started here 
So I start off day 34, tending to my crops, and then I go check in on my chickens. I realized I actually forgot to feed them the day before, but because I have four slots to feed, I always fill it up full, so they were still happy, still producing eggs, all good there. Then I decided to donate some more things to the museum. I had quite a few geodes to break, so I had a lot of things to donate. Decided to banter with Haley on the beach and troll her a little bit. And then it was time to collect all the beach forageables. And then I honestly just spent the rest of the day uh, clearing up my farm a little bit, cutting down some trees, getting some more raw supplies like wood and stone. Day 35 was great. I started off the day completing a quest for Harvey by delivering him a grape. Then I went and bought a bunch of melon seeds. And since I was just waiting for my steel axe to be done so that I could get all these melon seeds planted, I went to the mines for the rest of the day and had a much more successful time. I found a new strong sword, so I finally could throw out the club. I will not miss it. And to end off the day, I even hit level 6 mining and got the regular bomb recipe. Day 36, I did a big mine day after watering my crops, and I found some genie shoes, but I didn't hang on to them long because I kind of ran out of room in my backpack, and they weren't as good as my current boots in my opinion. And I did have such good items that I found that day, so I wasn't too worried about it, and I did hit level 105 in the mine, so that was great. When I got home, I went to bed, and the best thing happened. A fairy visited my farm and hit up the melons, which I was so happy about because I really needed the money. And as you can see here, I actually had a pretty good day of shipping. So I was really set up for success heading into the next day. Day 37, you better believe I raced out to harvest those melons. I had a big harvest with my summer seeds and some radishes as well. So I bought 50 more seeds. Then I bought another 30 more seeds. I decided to spend a little bit shopping local and bought some bean pots because I knew I was going to need the energy for the mines. Hit level 110 in the mines and got a pair of the space boots. Day 38, I gave Maru a birthday present and I also finished the mines obtaining the skull key. So now the mines are done. I can just use it as I need resources. On day 39, I collected some pine tar and then visited my chickens. They were a little bit mad because, oops, I forgot to feed them for a few days. But we're back on track. And then I headed to the luau where I donated a gold melon and the potluck soup turned out pretty good. I also crafted some lightning rods and let's just say it was perfect timing. Day 40, I woke up and the forecast was rain and thunder, which was perfect. So I watered all my crops and then I went and picked up my steel axe, which was perfect because I needed it to get those sprinklers online finally. Then I stopped into Pierre's and I ended up getting a cutscene with Abigail and playing Journey of the Prairie King and fun fact I have never actually beat that game before even the first level so I was really proud that we crushed it out and we ended up passing it no problem. Maybe our stuck up server boy is actually kind of warming up to the townspeople a little bit after all so we needed to rush home and then start clearing our tillable sprinkler eligible land and get some of these melon seeds planted and sprinkler because automation is key to start really making the money so we can hit our 750,000 goal. On day 41, it did in fact storm, so I went to the mines and I found a bunch of dust sprites. I've never seen this many dust sprites in my life. I don't know if I just had bad luck before, but they were everywhere, which is perfect because I wanted some more coal as well as some more iron. Also, the chicken saga continues. I forgot to pet them, but at least they had food this time, so we are getting there in terms of taking care of our animals. Day 42, I finished some bundles put some more sprinklers on my farm, and then late at night, I went back and finished the engineer bundle, which ended up completing the boiler room and unlocking the minecart. Not much to report on 43. I used my handy beach chest to store some of the fishing that I did the morning, and then I got really lucky and got two iridium bars worth of iridium ore, so that was fantastic. Day 44 was just more fishing and foraging. I did hit level 5 fishing and chose the trapper profession. Day 45, chicken saga continues. I forgot to pet them again, 
They were fed, but I decided enough is enough. So what I decided to do is make a chicken path so that I could clearly see it when I'm watering my crops and not forget about them. Day 46 was so eventful. I woke up and saw the forecast was rain, so I dropped off my watering can to get that upgraded. I also found an ancient seed, so I donated that to the museum and got the recipe for ancient seeds. Later at night, I broke into the secret forest finally, and I got really lucky with a bunch of mahogany seeds. And then on my very first cast fishing, I ended up catching a carp and, more importantly, a dinosaur egg. Day 47 was also eventful. I had a huge harvest on my farm, and then I ended up picking up a rare seed from the traveling cart. After that, I got really lucky, and for the second day in a row, found another dino egg, and then I had a really awkward conversation with Maru's dad, and then ended up selling a lot of stuff, and ended up getting 11,000 gold in one day. As for day 48, I picked up my watering can, dropped off my hoe, and then ended up making a tree corral and planting an apple tree because I knew I needed a lot of apples for my bundles. Day 49, I had quite a few melons to harvest. I spent the rest of the day in the mines, and overnight I hit level 8 farming and finally unlocked the keg recipe, and then I also hit level 6 combat as well. Day 50, halfway through, all I did was build a barn. Day 51 is pretty uneventful. The biggest thing that happened was harvesting some corn and blueberries. On day 52, I finally started reaping the true benefits of my sprinklers. I had a huge harvest, and then I went and bought a couple more chickens, visited the secret woods to gather some hardwood, and ended up finding some new decor for my home. Day 53, I did some errands, I upgraded to a big coop, and I had a huge mine haul. Day 54, I had a big end of season harvest, and then I ended up doing some errands, including delivering a cave carrot to Alex, upgrading my backpack to the biggest size, and buying two dairy cows for my new barn. Later, I ran into some trouble in the mines and ended up dying, which lost me the four salads I just bought, which cost me a thousand gold, as well as 30 coal, which was very annoying. Day 55, I bought some duckies recovered some of my coal through geodes, and built a fence for my animals. Last day of the season, I decided to go to the mines so that I could get some more coal, had my first harvest of wine, and then I begrudgingly attended the festival. Day 57, we are at fall one, and it was a big planting day, as well as I planted my rare seed. I knew that this season I had to be very efficient if I wanted to achieve all the goals I originally set. Day 58, I realized I planted a little bit too much around my sprinklers and unlocked the order board. Day 59, I realized I needed a lot of fish for the community center still, caught some, and also a super cucumber. Day 60, after my farm duties, I spent the rest of the day in the mines resource gathering and hit level 7 combat. Day 61, I had a huge beach haul, ended up popping open some geodes and getting a prismatic shard, planted a bunch more seeds, and donated some items to my community center bundles to make a plan for what I still needed. Day 62, I had rain again, and so I just cleared my farm and planted the fall seeds that I got from a bundle I completed. Day 63 was pretty boring, but I just tried to be productive all day and stay up late enough to harvest my wine. Day 64, I harvested some cranberries, started collecting blackberries as they were in season, and completed two quests for Linus and Marnie. On day 65, I wanted to get a deluxe coop, but I didn't have quite enough, so I ended up going back a few hours later and choosing to upgrade for the big barn instead. Then I mined for the rest of the night, and I almost went home, but I decided just to go down one more corridor, and I'm so glad I did, because look what I found. On day 66, I tended to my crops, and then I spent the rest of the day fishing. I was trying to get the tiger trout, walleye, and some other fish that I could not seem to catch, and because I'm not using the Stardew Wiki, I don't know where to catch these fish. I did, however, get a diamond. On day 67, I collected a lot of blackberries and hardwood. I was very productive this day, but then at the end of the day, I really wanted to milk the cows, and I thought I had enough energy to do it, but I ended up being exhausted. I've actually never had the exhaustion before, so I started walking very slowly, 
And luckily I was pretty close to home, so I made it to bed before I passed out. Day 68, I had a brand new baby duck hatch, which was great. Also found my first duck feather. And then I spent the rest of the day uh, scything for hay because I knew winter's coming and that's not gonna be an option soon. On day 69, I had so many crops to harvest and it ended up giving me what I needed to complete the most annoying bundle, which was the foragers bundle. I also ended up catching a tiger trout and a walleye and so I felt really good about that because I was able to complete one more fishing bundle and made great progress on a couple more as well. Overnight there was a big noise and I wasn't sure what it was but when I walked out onto my farm I saw that I had this awesome little stone owl looking over my sprinkler crops so that was really awesome and then I harvested a huge amount of pumpkins. As you can see not all my pumpkins finished because I forgot to water the ones without a sprinkler one or two days, but luckily none of them died. Finally hit level 10 farming overnight, chose the artisan profession because I had some artisan goods stocked up I haven't sold yet, and then had a huge $30,000 day selling my crops. Day 71, I made some mayonnaise and cheese makers so I could really capitalize on that new artisan profession. And I ended up having a harvest for some pale ale and some more wine. Day 72, it was time for the fair. I won the display challenge and then I gambled all of my coins slowly but surely to get over 2,000. I earned my first star drop, which is going to be really helpful with some more energy. And as we expected from a basic surfer, his favorite thing was waves. Day 73, I decided to finish the vault room. I did all three bundles and then I also completed one other bundle which was the fall crops i thought i completed the animal bundle but i actually needed a large goat milk but all in all a successful day for the community center on day 74 i had a huge harvest day including a very large pumpkin and then i decided you know what i'm gonna go check out calico desert because i might as well i didn't get very far into the mines unfortunately i did find some gold and gems but then i got the purple haze of doom and i decided i'm done for the day Day 75 was a great day. Wishbone decided to love me. It was kind of a secret goal for myself that the dog would love me before the end of the year. So I was really happy about that. Then I had a really good beach haul and treated myself to an iridium rod because I knew some of the fish that I still hadn't caught yet were going to be a little bit challenging. I tried to catch a lava eel, but no luck. Day 76, I really started to focus on the artisan goods because if I wanted to make my money goals and complete some of the other things, I knew I really needed to be diligent collecting eggs every day and putting them into the mayonnaise makers as well as the cheese. I also went back to Calico Desert and I swore that you could catch a scorpion carp in the pond right outside Skull Cave, but all I kept getting was sandfish, so then I really started to question, maybe I'm thinking of a different pond. I went into Skull Cavern and I found some cool stuff, a little bit of Iridium, and I made it to level 21, but I just did not have enough time to make it to level 25, which was one of the key quests that I just got in the mail a few days prior. On day 77, I managed to complete my last bundle for the bulletin board, so I finished that. I got a space heater for my barn and I earned some friendship points with the NPCs. Then I decided to try my luck again at catching a lava eel. I was so close to catching it, and then I completely fumbled. Luckily, my very next cast, I got a chance at redemption, and guess what? I caught it. On day 78, it was quite eventful. I tended to my artisan goods because I wanted to keep that money rolling in. Then I completed a quest for Marnie. I ended up also buying an auto grabber from her because I really wanted to start maximizing my time. I also figured this might be one of the last rainy days, so I went to every single spot where you could fish, lake, river, ocean, and I ended up catching a catfish and a red snapper, which I needed, so I'm so glad that I did this. I also ended up giving Lewis his purple shorts back, accepting a quest from the order board, and accepting another quest from Abigail. I was also able to complete two more bundles and then I decided 
to head to Calico Desert and try to catch that Scorpion Carp, but I just kept hooking Sandfish. However, I did have one cast where it seemed really hard, so then I thought, this is the Scorpion Carp. However, I didn't end up catching it. On day 79, I went right back to Calico, ate some trout soup so I could increase my fishing level, and after about six casts, I ended up catching the Scorpion Carp. Then I headed into Skull Cavern, and I did find some useful things, finally got to level 25, but then realized there's no actual reward for it, so it kind of felt like a bit of a waste of time. Once I was back in Pelican Town, I ended up completing the Masterfish Bundle, which was the one I was the most worried about, so that felt really great. On day 80, I harvested some fruit from my apple tree, and then I made sure to tend to all my crops because we're almost at the end of the season here. I also built a deluxe coop, and then I spent the rest of my day clearing my farm of trees so that I could get some more wood because I knew I'm going to need some for my last few projects. Day 81, it was time to harvest my gem berry, and then I dashed immediately to the community center, and I ended up completing everything I needed to unlock the greenhouse. Since I knew that the greenhouse was going to be in use very soon, I went to Calico Desert, I finally met Sandy, and I picked up some starfruit seeds, as well as a new shirt to wear. I then spent the rest of the night in Skull Cavern and teleported home with a farm totem I found. On day 82, I utilized the greenhouse to plant my ancient seeds as well as the starfruit seeds I just bought. And then I ended up having a little bit of a chicken on the loose, but I ended up just giving up getting it back in the cage. I'm sure it will go back into the coop at nighttime. Then I used the rest of the melon seeds I'd left over from summer to round out my greenhouse. Yes, I know the design is a mess. On day 83, it was time to harvest the majority of the rest of my crops. I also had a nice little mushroom forest growing here, so hopefully that will stay into the next year. I also did a bunch more crafting, organizing of my farm, and of course, making as many artisan goods as possible. I also visited Robin so that I could get my kitchen upgrade, and then I just killed some time until the Spirits Eve Festival, where I found a golden pumpkin as expected. Day 84 was the last day of fall. You can see Robin has gotten to work on my house renovation. And then I really just needed to wrap up everything else. As you can see here, I'm only about halfway to my gold goal, but I do have a lot of stuff I can still sell as well as I'm going to be making artisan goods into the winter. So I'm still pretty confident that I can reach the goal. Next up, I went to Pierre's and bought some pumpkin seeds so I could plant them in my greenhouse. Next up, it was time to visit Clint and crack open the rest of the geodes I had. After that, I decided to upgrade my gold pickaxe since I'll probably need it for the Skull Cavern come winter time. And then I went and planted a bunch more seeds and sprinklers in my greenhouse. Yes, I know I'm going to need to fix this design very soon. Day 85, the first day of winter. I was panicking because I didn't know if you could catch sturgeon in the winter, but luckily it was the last fish I needed. So then I scampered around the map to find a snow yam and a holly and then head to the community center to finish off what I had started. I ended up finishing the community center by putting those last three items in and I was really proud of myself because I've never done the community center within the first calendar year so that was really exciting. To celebrate my achievement I decided to head to Jody and Sam's house and have a little bit of a fish fry. Then it was back to work planted my winter seeds, and then went to bed, and the bridge got repaired. On day 86, so much stuff happened. I woke up in my bigger house, became a Stardew celeb and got a trophy, sent Morris packing finally, found a magnifying glass, got a copper pan, picked up my pickaxe, went to the quarry for the first time. Side note, it was very underwhelming. Bought some star fruit seeds, Almost got destroyed by skeletons, and then finally obtained the Galaxy Sword. On day 87, I went to the Skull Cavern, which ended up getting me level 10 mining, and I chose the Gemologist profession. On day 88, I was making sure that all my artisan good makers were constantly running so I could maximize my profits to the end of this 100 days. I also was looking around my farm, and I noticed out of the corner of my eye something purple, and I had an asteroid on my farm. I also had a bunch of geodes from Skull Cavern, so I opened all those up, and then I went to Willie's shop and revealed his boat project. So then I thought, could I actually get to Ginger Island in the next 10 days? 
On the way back to my farm, I stopped in at Marnie's and bought a couple rabbits, and then I decided to start collecting hardwood because I did not have enough to repair the boat. On day 89, I accidentally bought 15 pizzas instead of three pizzas, and I ended up catching a squid that I could give to Willie for one of my quests. On day 90, I repaired the boat, and then I gave Emily a gift on behalf of Clint, but it kind of backfired, haha. Dropped off my hoe to upgrade it to steel level, bought a deluxe barn, and then overnight the boat got repaired by Willie and Robin. Day 91, I decided to visit Ginger Island, and I ended up starting my golden coconut hunt. I met Leo, kind of? Then I realized I don't have my hoe, which is going to be a key requirement to get Ginger Island going, so I ended up going back to Stardew Valley. I tried to find Carolyn to give her a birthday present, but instead I got that weird tea cutscene, and then later in the day I finally gave her a birthday present. Day 92 I got some tea saplings, some shipwreck goods, and I whooped everybody at the fishing competition. On day 93, I picked up my hoe, went to Ginger Island because I wanted to collect 10 gold coconuts, got obliterated by some tiger slimes, but I did hit my 10 coconuts. Adds insult to entry, I did lose my coal again. At least I did have 10 golden coconuts so I could open up the west side of the island, start the fisherwoman's quest, explore the island a little bit, and collect some more golden coconuts. And then I ended up going home for an early evening. In 94, I decided since I needed coal, I should try to do the ectoplasm quest as well as collect some coal, which worked out pretty good because I did end up with 12 coal and finding the ectoplasm. So I delivered it to the wizard, and after that I spent the rest of the day chopping wood and hardwood. On day 95, I got the recipe for a mini obelisk. I ended up harvesting a bunch of crops from my greenhouse and replanting with star fruit. Then I went to Skull Cavern and went on an iridium hunt and I did pretty successful and around 1am I teleported home. In 96 I hatched a baby dinosaur, put my artisan good makers to work, completed a quest for the wizard, and then chopped a bunch of wood. After that I bought a sheep and a pig, made my fenced area bigger, moved all of my buildings around, and built a silo. To round out the day, I refilled my silo with hay and harvested all my outdoor crops. I was pumping out the artisan goods since I only have a few days left to make money, picked up my gold watering can, and then headed to Skull Cavern where I got a lot of gold ore, iridium ore, and other treasures that I could craft into bars or sell. I even fought a dinosaur and ended up getting another dino egg. I ended up finding another full dinosaur floor and thought, no way, so I just went home and started crafting some gold bars and iridium bars. Day 98, I put another dinosaur egg in an incubator, smelted some more bars, and had a big harvest of pumpkins. I also scavenged for some forageables and cut some more hardwood, and then I had one last big haul of artisan goods. I also spent the night fishing so I could find some green algae for a fish pond. Day 99, I went back to Ginger Island for redemption, and this time those tiger slimes were toast. So I ended up collecting a few more golden walnuts. I pressed on into the cave, and in a very short amount of time, I got a golden walnut, some cinder shards, and some pineapple seeds. So those were the things that I really was looking for anyways. I then teleported back to Pelican Town because I did want to go to the night market where I bought some cauliflower seeds and went to the mermaid show. I thought I remembered the combination, but I didn't. Day 100, the very last day, I started the day off by planting my pineapple seeds, taking one last chance to humiliate myself with my greenhouse layout. Then I decided I wanted a last memorable day, so I went to Ginger Island since there's so much left to do. I got some lucky golden walnuts right away, so I thought maybe I could hit 20 and unlock the farmhouse. I then found a golden coconut, which I knew would give me plus one if I could get back to Clint, so I tried the crystal game, but I failed. I found my 18th one, and I tried a couple things like fishing to get the last one, but it wasn't working out. I did want to go to the night market, so I ended up teleporting home. I bought some melon seeds, and then it was time for some deep sea fishing. I knew the last day of the 100 days was during the night market, so I really made another secret goal to catch all three fish that you could catch underwater. So I got the spook fish right away, and then it took me a little bit longer, but then I ended up catching the midnight squid, 
And then right as I had my last cast, it was a really difficult fish, so I assumed it was the last one. And sure enough, it was the blobfish, so I did get all three. So then I kind of felt like it was justified that I didn't unlock the farmhouse on Ginger Island. Going to bed on day 100, now it's time to recap what goals I hit and my experience overall. I had such a blast making this video. It was so fun to play through on the beach farm. If you haven't played the beach farm, I really recommend it. It just has its own unique style and challenges, and I cannot wait for the next 100 and beyond days. If you like this series and watch to the end, again, thank you so much, and let me know in the comments if you want to see uh, 100 to 200 days video, and if so, what you want me to focus on. Relationships, getting rich, completing Ginger Island, all of the above. As for my goals, let's see what I completed. So my number one was completing the community center, and of course you saw that we did that, so I'm really stoked about that one. Goal number two was the profits. Did I make 750k? No, I was way off. I think that if I would have had a better start to spring and even the first part of summer, I probably could have made it, but it just gives me an even bigger challenge for next time. Goal number three was my skills, and I did hit farming and mining level 10, but foraging level 9, fishing level 7, and combat level 9. So I was pretty close, and honestly, I did not put enough focus on fishing, so I kind of figured that one was going to flop, but overall, I'm pretty impressed. Number four, I wanted to be antisocial, and really I was. A lot of the hearts that I got were from completing the community center, and I did talk to the NPCs at most of the festivals, just because in the next 100 days, it just might make it a little bit easier if I do have some base hearts. And Maru seemed to be the person that I was getting the closest to, but you never know what could happen. Some of these other bachelors and bachelorettes might sneak up. Number five, not using the wiki, which I said a little bit into the video. So I actually didn't end up having to use the wiki. And a few of the things I got really lucky because I was stumped on a lot of the community center bundle items and fish. And I'm just really thankful that I ended up finding everything because usually it would take me probably till year three if I wasn't using the wiki. Overall, I'm happy with my farm. Another goal that I didn't actually really mention is I wanted to try to make the farm as aesthetic as possible because that's a really good challenge in 100 days because your resources and time are limited. I didn't do the greatest job, but that's okay. That gives me something to focus on in the future. Uh, I had some rare events happen, which was really fun to see. And overall, I just really enjoyed this playthrough. Again, thank you so much for watching. If you haven't already, please hit that subscribe button. That's going to really help me out to bring you a lot more content and stay tuned for the next video. What's going to happen? Welcome back to the Beach Farm Adventures of Dane. We just completed the first 100 days of Stardew Valley. So now it's time to move on to days 101 to 200. I'll link the first 100 days in the description if you want to go back and watch that first, I recommend it. But if you really don't care, basically where we left off is we completed the community center and failed all the rest of our goals. So here are my new goals. Most notably, this goal was actually 2 million gold that I wanted to earn in total by the end, but I increased it to 5 million at the last minute before starting to record, so we'll see what happens. Side note, not using the wiki this time was really difficult and you will see exactly why later. So hopping right into it, on day 101, I was about to sell all my rare fish from the night market, and then I decided I better hang on to them. I also picked up my gold axe and busted open my first gold coconut. I then headed to Ginger Island, and I wanted to hit 20 golden walnuts, which I finally did, so then I could build the hut. This is going to allow me to be much more productive on Ginger Island. I also immediately moved the bed to the doorway because all I'm going to be using this home for is sleeping, and then I cleared as much as possible so I could plant some crops. I also attended the night market and bought some pumpkin seeds to plant on Ginger Island or in my greenhouse. And since I want to get married, I also started making some connections with the bachelor and bachelorettes. Some went better than others. Day 102, I found out who I was gifting. I had a huge beach haul, and then I spent some time planting on Ginger Island so I could get that income growing. I also started to find the Ginger Island journal scraps. Also gave a very bad gift to Leah. Oops. A great gift to Emily, and then somebody who actually appreciates a good pizza. 
day 103, I teleported to Skull Cavern, and I did pretty good. I got to level 58, and I basically just sold everything that I could. On day 104, I bought a cool new hat, chopped a bunch of trees because I knew I was going to need a lot of wood, sewed a new outfit to go with the hat so I could get rid of this ugly shirt finally, and met up with the wizard to start a very important quest line. I also finally used the rusty key to go down into the sewers and meet Krobus, which also resulted in my very first star drop of the game. Are we surprised that Dane's favorite thing is something as basic as waves? No. The next day I found a note that completely reminded me of a quest that I forgot about, so I got that going with the key quest line, and then spent the rest of the day in the mines, and I ended up finding a ton of iron ore. Day 106, I dropped off the rainbow shell at the train station, finally learned after, embarrassingly enough, six years of why people said that Abigail eats rocks. It's this dialogue right here. Totally missed that one. Spent a little bit of time in the mines looking for some gold ore, and then planted a tree grove. Continue on to day 107, I donated the last dwarf scroll, and it always stresses me out when I don't have all four, so finally got that. Bought a bunch of coal since I keep losing it every time I die in the mines, and then I cracked open some geodes. I had 69 of them, and I got tired of it, so I stopped at 47. I could finally start buying the bombs instead of crafting them, so I visited the dwarf and then headed to the Skull Caverns. It wasn't the greatest run, but I did find a note that I was really looking for, even though it doesn't end up turning out to anything good, and then I did find some gold ore, so it wasn't a complete waste. On day 108, I had my first big greenhouse harvest and planted the 10 beets that I needed for the key quest. I also gave the maple syrup to the bear and realized that the prize wasn't actually that useful because I wasn't planning on collecting that many blackberries or salmon berries this playthrough. I then headed into town and cracked open some artifact troves and it was really good because it ended up giving me a great reward at the museum which was five warp totems to the farm which is perfect since I started going to Ginger Island so much. Back at home, I crafted 15 more kegs because I knew I really needed to ramp up my artisan production if I was going to achieve my goal of 5 million by the end of this 200 days. And speaking of goals, I am dangerously close to hitting my next subscriber goal, and it's a really big milestone. So if you're loving this video, you're digging the vibes, make sure to subscribe. Liking and sharing the video also helps, by the way. Since I recently harvested some starfruit this morning, I decided to start making starfruit wine because it does sell for a very good price. To finish off the day, I placed a crystallarium I forgot about and started crafting some jade. Day 109 and it is festival day. I checked on my tree grove and I actually ended up using some tree fertilizers so that I could just make sure that all of them were ready for spring. I randomly bought some home decor and then I gave my gift to my secret person, which was Gus. I didn't really know any of Gus's favorites, so I just gave a prismatic shard and it worked out pretty well. My secret person was Vincent and I got, of course, a terrible gift. It was one clay. So there's always next year. Back to a regular schedule on day 10, I harvested my first ancient fruit and I was hoping that I would get multiple seeds. Otherwise, this is going to take forever to fill up this greenhouse. The seed maker was kind enough to end up giving me two seeds instead of one, so then I could plant them and really get things rolling. I then went to Robins to build a shed because I didn't want my kegs all over the farm anymore, and then it was time to head to Ginger Island. I was planting seeds happily and then realized I did not do the correct spacing, so I had to waste one melon seed, but that is okay. I continued on and planted as much as I could, and then I headed to the Lava Dungeon. I started pretty late in the day, so I didn't make it all the way through, but I did make it to level 5, and I got a dragon tooth, which is really helpful, because I'm going to need about 20 of them in total. On day 111, I did all the typical farm stuff. I'm not going to tell you every single task I do each day, because it'll just get repetitive, but you can best believe that I am hustling around, harvesting, making artisan goods, planting as many crops as possible, basically doing whatever I can to reach this 5 million goal, because I'm still not even at 750,000 yet. I was really starting to earn trust with the townspeople because they trusted me to handle a business dispute, and then I had a very weird encounter, or I don't even know if I was really there, but it was with Emily, and I'm still not sure how I feel about it. Then it was back to the mines because I needed a ton more of iron ore and coal. 
Day 112, I found uh, Dwarf Sword, which has a defense stat, which I really liked. I ended up completing the Lava Dungeon, unlocking the Forge, and I ended up enchanting the Dwarf Sword. It ended up being better than my Galaxy Sword, so I'm going to use it for a while and see how it goes. We're on year two and it's spring again. I spent most of the day planting cauliflower, and then I went to Calico Desert because I thought Mondays is the day that they trade Jade for Stone Staircases. Spoiler, it's not. Day 114 was so uneventful, the only notable thing I could think of to report is that I did find another dragon tooth. Day 115, however, was much better. I had a lot of starfruit wine ready to go, so I took care of that, watered my crops, put the kegs into my new shed, where I started more starfruit wine, and then I did a big ginger island harvest, planted even more crops in my newfound space back at home, and I finally managed to hit 750,000 total gold earned. Only 15 days too late. The next day, it was back to Ginger Island to do some more cave crawling, and I got some more golden walnuts, another dragon's tooth, and a funny little pirate's hat. Day 117, I shopped local. I supported every small business in Pelican Town, and I planted all of the regular trees in my greenhouse. Later in the day, I had a pizza party with Sam and Shane and went to find a talisman in the grossest cave, my least favorite one, except for the dark levels in the original mine. And to end the day, I bought some goods from my buddy Krobus. On 118, I realized my quests were kind of piling up, so I completed about four of them, and then I bought some little piggies for my farm. The next day, I finally got my jade staircases and some warp totems to the desert, used the talisman to unlock the cave, but I forgot to bring the void mayonnaise that has been sitting in a chest for a very long time already. Headed to Ginger Island, found another dragon tooth, and then kind of forgot I can't just bulldoze my way through enemies, and almost ended up dying. Overnight, something a little spooky happened to the Joja Mart. On day 120, I woke up on Ginger Island and finally got the Cinder Clown shoes that I was so close to getting the day before. I also got my fifth Dragon Tooth, and I hit level 10 combat. Then the next day, I harvested and replanted some star fruit. I refreshed my kegs, and then I became part of what seemed like a new medical drama series in Pelican Town. Luckily, I give excellent medical advice. Then I finally remembered the void mayo, got the magic ink, and unlocked a book so I can finally start working towards the obelisk and the Junimo hut. Then I wanted to terrorize myself, so I tried the crystal game, and I just kept failing, so I quit. For day 122, I satisfied the frog's appetite for a big juicy melon and harvested the rest of them. I also did some gifting and obtained the pirate's locket. I visited the abandoned Joja Mart to see what I needed for the bundle, and it was time to get to work because some of those were very, very far off for me. On day 123, I finished a puzzle, replanted some crops on Ginger Island, and then it was time to head back to Pelican Town where I crafted some kegs and got them straight to work. The only eventful things that happen on day 124 is I got a sewing machine and I spent all the money I had on starfruit. Day 125 is another festival day, so I harvested the crops that were ready, and then I made my way to the festival where I hung out with a lot of the people I was starting to know and starting to try to date. Then I did the egg hunt again just for fun, and I ended up doing even better than last year, so I won again. On day 126, I decided I was going to go to the Skull Cavern and use my lucky lunch that I had bought at the saloon. Um, what I didn't realize is that I should have brought some bombs with me, but I thought, you know what, I have some staircases, I'm just going to go ahead and check it out anyways. Well, it was kind of a fail because I immediately got the purple Dusk of Doom, 
And I just decided to leave because I wasn't wasting my lucky lunch on this. I decided to do a lava cave run instead, which went a little bit better, but not much. And then I still didn't have any bombs, but I bought one at the halfway point so that I could go release Professor Snail. The next morning, I harvested a bunch of cauliflower and replaced it with pumpkin and starfruit. Then I finally completed the pirate locket quest, which I forgot has a very good prize by the way. And then it was finally time to use that lucky lunch and I ended up hitting level 100 in the mines with the help of quite a few staircases and the actual correct supplies. Bottoms up, I'm very glad to have 25 more HP. On day 128, I harvested some more starfruit wine and replenished my kegs and then I hatched a little void chicken. Good vibes ended there though because I was walking around my farm and I realized I didn't harvest my cauliflower. The one small section that does not require my constant care and I messed it up. So I ended up getting some kale seeds because I didn't have enough time for another cauliflower harvest. But now in retrospect, now that I'm editing this, I think I actually did. Let me know in the comments if you know if you can plant on the 16th for cauliflower and still harvest on the 28th. But anyways, I just cut my losses there. I gave the exact same gift twice, so why would I ever get creative when I get the reaction that I wanted? And I decided it was such a bad day, I'm going to treat myself to a new house. Or at least a new house upgrade. I did some other chores around the farm, and then I went to bed, and even though I had a very small shipment just over 8,000 gold, I did end up hitting over 1 million total earned gold. So that was kind of a win, I guess. Day 129 was so basic. I just attended to my kegs, shopped local, and spent the day in the lava cave. Day 130, I spent the whole day in the lava caves again. I bought the island totem recipe. I also got mauled by tiger slimes, but I did get quite a few gold coconuts, so it was worth it. I ended the day with enough cinder shards to also buy the deluxe retaining soil recipe, which was one of my mini goals to have by summer one. To start off day 31, I crafted 20 kegs and all I really had to put in them was cauliflower, but that'll do for now. I then wasted my time going to Clint's. Um, this is not actually the last time that I forget that he is closed on Fridays so I couldn't break open my geodes. To settle down from the anger, I went to a rock rejuvenation ceremony, and then I tried to make up with Leah by giving her a pumpkin, but this is the last time that I think I am actually nice to Leah, so if you're a Leah stan, sorry in advance. I also got another ancient seed, but due to my terrible greenhouse layout that I do fix eventually, I couldn't plant it, and I was too lazy to craft a sprinkler. On day 132, I crafted an iridium band, which is good because I was getting by on some pretty basic rings. Scooted over to Ginger Island to get the deluxe soil recipe so I could start getting the supplies I needed to craft it. And then I had a very underwhelming run in the Skull Cavern. On day 133, it was a much better day. I crafted 80 deluxe retaining soils, which is setting me up really good for summer. And then I went to see Clint and I cracked open 10 golden coconuts and I got quite a bit of great stuff, including some iridium and two banana trees, which I planted on Ginger Island. I also visited Robin and started the construction for my cellar because I knew I was going to need that for not only money, but to complete the movie theater as well. In the evening when I was leaving the secret woods after collecting some hardwood, I got drunk with Shane and then after that I stumbled home and ran into Abigail and made some good connections with them both and then I went to bed. Day 134, after a very big star fruit harvest in my greenhouse, I went to the desert and I got a bunch more star fruit seeds. And then I had a very successful run in the Skull Cavern. I found a lucky ring, which I was really excited about because I don't know if I've ever actually had one before. I also got an auto grabber. And then I thought my actual keyboard was broken because I started moving really slow. So I thought my keys were stuck, but it turns out that it was just my spicy eel that had ran out. So crisis averted. 
I was so distracted by this speed situation though that I didn't really check the time and I ended up passing out which I learned is not really that big of a deal so I end up doing that a lot more during this run. On day 135, I harvested the random kale that I planted. I also filled up my first shed full of kegs and then realized I actually have too many so it's time to upgrade. I also gifted a bunch of my favorite bachelors and bachelorettes and ended up kind of joining in on a workout class unintentionally so that was kind of fun. After I got tired of exercising, I went back to the farm where I had more wine that became complete. So I refilled all the kegs and then crafted some tappers to put on my tree grove. Day 136 was the flower dance and I finally didn't have to dance alone. I ended up asking Maru to dance with me and we had a great time. When I got home, I also had some bonus wine and pickles to harvest, so I did that and then headed off to bed. On day 137, I went to the desert and I bought a bunch of starfruit seeds. I spent literally all my money. And then it was time to, I think you can probably guess what's about to happen here. Yeah, I did in fact not even have enough money to take the boat to Ginger Island. I did consider scrounging around and selling some things, but I thought, you know what, I'll just go tomorrow. I spent the rest of the day foraging and chopping down trees because I still wasn't level 10 foraging. And yes, I do have an idea for this random area with all these pine trees, and hopefully it's going to work out later. I also wanted to make some more kegs, which I ended up doing right before the end of the day. The next day I got pretty lucky with ancient seeds. I ended up getting three seeds twice in a row, which is amazing. And then I went to the lava cave where there were so many flames coming at me. I thought I wasn't going to make it, but I did make it at least to the halfway point. And then I just decided to scrap that and go right to the forge where I combined my lucky ring and my iridium band. Day 139 was just a boring copper, iron, and coal hunt. Day 140 was kind of funny because I can't use the starter wiki like I said so I didn't know exactly where to find green algae but I knew that you could catch it in I think the sewers and the lake so I tried my best but could not find more than one and I needed it for my fish ponds. I did however catch a legendary fish which is so funny that I could catch a legendary but not some green algae. In other news, I made some more crystallariums to get some more jade production going, and I am just ready for summer because I think I can really start to make some real money. Day 141, we are at summer and this is go time. I planted everything I could and the deluxe retaining soil was really gonna help me out, so I'm really pumped about that. When I was done work for the day, I gifted Emily, Pam, and Shane, and then I walked out and walked back in thinking maybe I'll get a cutscene, and oh, did I ever. This cutscene is so funny because not only am I kind of dating Shane and Emily, but then Clint wants to date Emily, and then she's kind of flirting with Shane, and so it's one big love rectangle that, I don't know, it just, it was very timely. We then moved to day 142, and I gave a gift to Abigail, and then I headed off to Ginger Island where I harvested a bunch of crops. Also, my tree grove was finally complete and starting to produce on a regular basis, which is perfect. And then I tried to build a fish pond, but Robin decided she wasn't working this day, so I had to wait. Day 143, I collected some oak resin, built a fish pond, and caught a sturgeon, because I think that might be the only fish that you can get caviar from. Wiki, help me! Just kidding, I resisted, but I was definitely guessing if I was correct on this or not. Day 144, I used the secret note I found to catch a necklace. I also caught a void salmon, and I didn't realize it had to be gold level, but luckily it was. And I cannot express enough how angry I was about the algae situation. It was really hard to get some green algae, but then today I got one, two, three, and from the most unintentional way but whatever at least I caught some more. I finally had some more ancient seeds ready on day 145 so I immediately put them into the seed maker and then I went to
to kind of plan out this idea that I used in a my very first farm and basically it was kind of a shed or a slime hutch surrounded by oak and maple trees because it looks really cool in especially fall. So I used my watering can to measure of course and then I went and made it happen. My only problem is I am so far away from a golden clock that I think the trees are just going to get out of control so we'll see how long this lasts for. I then made some more kegs because as you can see here, I'm not even at 1.5 million yet and I'm supposed to be getting to 5 million so I really need to start ramping up this artist in production or I have no chance. Day 146 was starfruit seeds, artifact troves, and starting the island museum. Day 147, I replaced the cauliflower seeds on ginger island with starfruit and then I finally fixed my greenhouse, or at least made it a little bit better than it was, and I'm using all the spaces now. Me and Leah also finally called it quits this save file, so she will not be one of the candidates I pursue. And then the cutest thing happened, and I went to go to bed, and my puppy was sleeping in the bed, which is exactly how my dog in real life sleeps, and I just thought that was perfect. Maybe I just don't need anyone, and it can just be me and all the farm animals. And speaking of farm animals, yes, all my farm animals are alive, well, and thriving. Uh, I just haven't had to attend to them much because I have an auto grabber and the auto feeder in both barns. Also on this day, I loaded up all my kegs with starfruit and I built some fences on Ginger Island to stop the debris from ruining my crops. Day 149 was nothing special. I just organized my kegs and kept harvesting everything I could. I am terrible at watching the birthday calendar, but I did notice it was Maru's birthday today, so I gave her a birthday gift, and then I completely planned to spend the rest of the day in the mines, but I got through about three floors and decided, nah. So then I just went and bought a bunch of iron ore and copper. I also bought some flowers because, well, we're halfway through. And then I spent the rest of the day just organizing my farm, trying to make it a little more aesthetic, and I built a much bigger animal corral. On day 151, I finished my first full big keg shed, filled everything up with starfruit, and then it was time to head to the luau. When I arrived at the luau, I ate some food with Shane, danced with Emily, stared out at the ocean with Abigail, chatted with Maru while Harvey looked at my ear, and then talked about the governor with Sam. This year I went with a gold level starfruit and it was a big success. Then I headed back to the farm and I made a second iridium band. Okay, day 152, I still haven't hit 2 million gold. So I crafted some dino mayo and bought 455 starfruit seeds, planted them anywhere I could, and then headed to Ginger Island where I showed the frog the wheat that I had grown and it resulted in 20 golden walnuts so then I could build the portal back to the farm which is extremely helpful. I then checked on the tarot root I was growing because I knew I was gonna need it for an upcoming quest and I handed the monkey in the forest a banana so I got some more golden walnuts from that as well. Day 153 was basically just a big lava run. I found a ton of cinder shards, including 10 at the very last level. Day 154, just a little montage of me trying to make some money. Day 155, I bought some more coal because I could never have enough. And then I replanted Ginger Island because my starfruit and cauliflower is ready. It was time to craft some more casks on day 156. And I also completed the bundle that unlocks the movie theater. So I'm really excited about that. Day 157 was just a big run in the Skull Cavern, and I almost passed out. Day 158, I made some aged blobfish row, and I tried to buy a stable, but I guess Robin wasn't working. But then Redemption, Day 159, I did buy a stable. Day 160 was so frustrating because the blobfish wanted rice pudding, and I truly had no idea where to get that recipe from, how to make it, and I even looked through all my recipes, and I definitely did not have it. All right, so day 161 was a little bit of a roller coaster. I was excited because I finally got my horse that I named her Kaisa after my favorite League of Legends champion. And then I was like, you know what? I'm gonna get Kaisa a bow. We head to Cindersap Forest and it's gonna be such a happy time, but then we have a very dramatic and dark encounter with Shane, which I'm definitely glad that we were able to be there for him. And then we still bought a bow anyway. So it was just kind of very awkward. In other news, I finally got the mermaid pendant. I bought a bunch of staircases with all the jade I'd saved up, and I bought way more starfruit seeds. 
I hit 2 million gold overnight, and then on day 162, I went to the Adventure Guild to see if I had any rewards from the Monster Slayer goals that I had completed, and then I actually discovered there's an item recovery service which I had no idea about, so I got some of my coal back. I was so excited. The next day I won a rabbit from the crane game. I also combined my vampire ring with my other iridium band, so now I have two completed rings. And I spent way too long playing the crystal game and I still didn't crack the code. This day is actually bananas because I had never focused on fishing for more than maybe an hour of the day, but I decided today's the day. I bought 50 crab pots, and then I decided I need to get my fishing from level eight to level 10, let's go. So I literally am fishing for about two hours, and I get this rare event that I just learned about from YouTube Shorts about three days before. So the odds of this happening is like 0.000001%, and I'm just mind blown. Day 165, fished all day, all night, and hit level 9 fishing. Day 166, I just attended to business and spruced up my farm. Day 167, I had a huge starfruit harvest, and I started planting some ancient fruit on Ginger Island. Day 168, another big harvest of starfruit and wine, attended to my crab pots, and then I reluctantly went to the festival, and you will find out why later. On the first day of fall, I finally found a cool little secret fishing spot. Yes, I know I'm very late to the party. And then I just spent the rest of the day cleaning up my farm and planting pumpkins. I only decided to plant where I had sprinklers because I wanted to have enough time to focus on other money-making activities. On day 170, I realized I only have 30 days to make about two and a half million gold. So I really started to try to maximize my animal production as well as my crops. I also went to the wizard and realized that I needed 10 dragon tooth, not five. I had just crafted four island totems using dragon tooth, so I immediately went back into the lava mines to find some more dragon tooth. I actually got really lucky on this 200 day run with dragon tooth. Some people never find them, and I seem to find them all the time, so I was really happy about that. I also found some of the dragon scale boots, which I was really excited about, but because my weapon has some defense plus the cinder clown shoes, it wasn't actually that exciting after all. I also had a fairy visit me overnight, but I truly didn't really care about it because it wasn't going to make big pumpkins anyways. Day 171, I noticed my wine was ready, so I was really stoked about that. I also ran away from Leah and then went to a movie where I won three prizes from the crane game. On day 172, I did a big skull cavern run. I had also changed my outfit, but I didn't have a hat to go with it. And then I randomly found this red cowboy hat in one of the treasure floors. So I thought, yeah, this works. I also started to think about what is going to be next in this series, 300 days. And I think the only answer is trying to get perfection. I had noticed at the Adventure Guild that the dinosaur goal is actually kind of hard to get. So I decided if I ever see a dinosaur floor, I'm going to start now to try to get that number of dinos killed up. So that's what I did in this floor. I also collected about 145 Iridium ore and made it to level 127 before I passed out. Day 173, I had a big melon harvest. On day 174, I had a bunch of ancient fruit ready, so I turned them all into seeds, and then I had seven gold quality ancient fruits, and I realized I don't need that for the movie theater anymore, so I turned those into 11 more seeds as well and planted them all. I also could not find my last two dragon tooths for the island obelisk. But since I'm so persistent, I went right back the next morning and I found the last two that I needed. So that was awesome. I headed back to the farm and I had a bunch of wine ready. So I replenished my kegs and then I had a bunch of ancient fruit seeds that had fully grown. So I made them into more seeds and collected some fruit from my fruit trees. For day 176, I put another dino egg in the incubator and I also bought a blue chicken and a bunny rabbit for my new coop. And I spent the rest of the night fishing and smelting some bars, gold and iridium, so I could use them for crafting and sell them. Day 177, I spent way too much time searching for golden walnuts and didn't find a single one. Overnight, I finally surpassed 3 million gold. So on day 178, I really tried to turn up the jets and harvest everything I could from my greenhouse, plant, fish, you name it. I just wanted to make some more money because now I have about 20 days to get this done. On day 179, I went to Skull Cavern and I found so 
many prismatic shards. Seven in total, which is actually a new record for me in one run. And then I ended up passing out at 2 a.m. On day 180, I was able to buy nine lucky lunches from Gus, and I spent the rest of the day just collecting things on my farm and smelting some iridium bars. I made 27 ancient seeds on day 181 and started replacing some of the starfruit on Ginger Island with those seeds. Day 182, I collected some wine, crafted my ancient fruit seeds, visited Pierre, went to buy the obelisk but forgot the iridium bars, built a bigger coop, chopped some wood, and then harvested and replanted pumpkins. On day 183, I got another star drop after I harvested some gem berries I was growing in my greenhouse. And then I also finally built the obelisk. I remembered to bring iridium bars after the third time. Day 184 was the Stardew Valley Fair. Mary Lewis even tells me not to forget to clean out my display box, but I didn't even realize and so I just left. Day 185, I didn't even realize my pig was pregnant, but she gave birth to a baby pig. I also got some mail about a lost and found and I was really confused by it. But then when I was at Pierre's, it hit me that, oh my goodness, I didn't clean out my box. So I rushed over to this lost and found in Mary Lewis's house and I got all my items back. So that was so funny. I woke up on day 186 and my cow had a baby this time. So I guess I had two pregnant animals. So I just cleared all my star fruit for the day, collected my crab pots, and then when I went to bed, I actually hit level 10 fishing, so that is one more goal complete. Day 187, I basically just scampered around trying to make some money so I could hit this 5 million goal, and I built a silo because I have way too many animals and way too little hay. On day 188, I finally got my iridium axe, which was annoying me so much that I hadn't upgraded it yet. And then I had a big wine harvest as well as all my animal products and made some more ancient fruit seeds. At nighttime, I, well, I got a little bit of blackmail that I can use in the future. For day 189, I needed to make room for a dino. So I did something I did not think I would ever have to do. And that is sell a chicken. Profits over pets. On day 190, 191, and 192, I went on a bunch of dates with the bachelors and bachelorettes, gave some last minute gifts, and did as much artist and good production and supply gathering as possible for the end of this run. The next day I used my copper pan for the first and last time, and I thought of a good idea for the Spirits Eve costume party. On day 194, I harvested a bunch of star fruit, I finished my costume, and then I changed into my best outfit, and I proposed. To who, you might ask? Well, it's kind of a long and complicated story, so I actually made a second video, 200 Days of Stardew Valley Marriage Edition, to explain all the drama, all the twists and turns, and exactly what happened over this last 200 days. Day 195, I changed into my costumes. I looked pretty cute, I think. And I did a bunch of chores around the farm, including a big wine harvest, which is great because I only have five more days to make a lot more money. I also finally filled up my greenhouse with ancient seeds. So I went over to Ginger Island where I had 36 more ancient seeds I could make and start planting as soon as possible. It was then time to attend the festival where I basically told everybody who I was marrying and kind of had one last date with all the marriage candidates. Finished off the night with a golden pumpkin and now it is time to get this money goal. Day 196, I woke up and I hit 4 million, so I'm feeling really good about that. And then I wanted to do a quick farm tour so you could kind of see how my farm has developed over this last 100 days. It looks way better in fall than it does in winter. And then of course I spent the day hustling and making money in any way that I could. Day 197, it was the wedding day. Obviously, I can't reveal who it was because we have so much to talk about before then. But after we did get married, I spent the rest of the day working because I have goals to achieve, okay? Okay, so we have three days left on day 198. I literally sold everything I could without ruining the next 100 days where I'm going to try to get perfection. So I sold everything extra I had. I did all the money making activities. I harvested artisan goods all day. I rode around on my horse checking to see if things were done. And I went to bed and shipped 256,000 gold. 
day 199 i checked to see if my kegs were possibly ready and no they were not so sad but that was not going to stop me i am over 4.5 million and i have two full days so let's see what we can do i had so much star fruit that was done on ginger island so i just decided to sell it all and then i went back and kept doing my artisan good hustle all the way until 2 a.m. I shipped another 141,000 and I am so close with one day left. Let's go. Day 200, the final day. By the way, I had a blast making this video, so I hope you had a blast watching it too. This is it. So I went and checked my casts. Of course, they weren't done yet, but I still have time. I had a batch of diamonds complete. That is so helpful right now. I also have some wine completed, so what I'm deciding to do here is I'm going to harvest all my wine and my crab pots, and then I'm going to sell to Pierre and Willie to see how close I am. Maybe it will be worth it, even if my kegs aren't done, to get the gold ones out early, and maybe that will be enough. I hit 4.78 million, and I am so close, so now I have to do the math without using the stupid wiki for the final time. Back on the farm, it was time for more artisan goods, and here are my goals once again. So I did hit all upgrades on the home, I did get married, I didn't use the wiki not even a single time, I unlocked the movie theater, and all I have left to do is hit 5 million gold, and fully designed farm, which truly, that's just not going to happen. So now I am literally going around my farm, looking to see if kegs will finish, back to the cellar to see if the casts are done. I keep going back and forth and back and forth and it's getting later and later. I did check one last time to see if the casts were done and I did end up getting one bottle of wine out because I just wanted to see what it sold for to see if I would have made the right decision. And then I went to bed and sold whatever I did have and unfortunately I did not hit the goal. I was so close. There's definitely some things I could have done better and I probably would have hit it, but that is okay. This is a blast. What is gonna happen with the marriage? All the drama involved in that. Will I hit perfection in the 300 days? Make sure that you like and subscribe so you don't miss a single video. And in the meantime, check out my other videos to keep you busy. See you at the next one. All right, who did I marry on day 197 of my 200 day beach farm video? I know that's why you're here. So we are gonna find that out. We're gonna answer your questions. There's gonna actually be some more questions but don't worry, I will answer those too. If you're already confused, I strongly suggest you go watch my 200 and optimally my 100 days on a beach farm videos. This will all make a lot more sense, but if not, hey, just enjoy the wild ride that is going to be this video. All right, that's the only disclaimer, so let's get right into it with the quickest of recaps. Dane started out as a reluctant resident of Pelican Town, a spoiled surfer boy, if you will, and was somehow punished by his parents to take over their abandoned farm. He is a Zuzu City kind of guy, so what could he possibly have in common with the Pelican Town residents and make some real connections? The first two weeks, day 1 to 10, other than meeting everyone, he really didn't have much interaction. But when a quest came up on the town board on day 11 for Abigail, he obliged and also gave her a gift he found in the mines. For the next month or so, he really didn't have much to do with anyone, but then on a day at the beginning of summer, day 38, everything changed. Dane ran into Maru on a visit to the carpenter shop and rustled out a gift out of the backpack, and she loved it. They connected immediately. Although she has declined his request to dance on day 24, before that, there was immediate chemistry now pun intended. A week later on day 47, he was spending some time with Maru and had quite the conversation with her father. They also spent time together on day 56 at the Jellies Festival. Things only grew from there.
So jump ahead to day 197. Dane walks down the aisle, and of course Mary's mur- Emily? Wait, what? We need to go back and look at everything that happened between now and then. So within the first 100 days, you pretty much saw everything at the beginning of this video that happened that was substantial. Then we move on to the second 100 days and Dane's love life really started to pick up. On day 111, he had started to form much closer bonds with Emily and Shane. But by comparison, it was nothing as serious as what was going on between Maru and Dane. By day 136, as we know, Dane and Maru danced and things were still very much going in a good direction. But on day 144, we started to see Emily in a new light. Also during this time, Dane and Abigail got a little bit closer, but decided they were more of friends and bandmates than anything and then also things with Harvey were pretty much non-existent but things started to really pick up with Sam so there was still a lot of unknowns of who Dane was going to marry. By day 149 things also started to get very serious with Shane as we know Shane is going through quite a bit of stuff and Dane became that person that Shane was kind of going through this stuff with and it brought them a lot closer. The movie theater opened on day 159, and Dane was so excited because the first person and the only person he really wanted to take to a movie was Maru. So the movie seemingly went well, but then things got a little bit weird from there. Something was off by the end of the date, and Dane wasn't sure why. On day 160, they got into a fight. The next day, they made up, but Dane decided it was time to make a big gesture. So, on day 162, Dane proposed, and Maru said that she didn't feel the same way. And after that, things just kind of started to fall apart. On day 166, Dane had a very important moment with Shane, but it made him realize that he wanted to try to patch things up with Maru. He had to go see Robin about buying a fish pond anyways, but he just couldn't bring himself to talk to her. And then a few days later, he ran into Maru and her family at the festival, and it reminded him of how way back on day 56, it was kind of the first time like he actually felt part of Pelican Town. Day 182, he had drama with her at the house. And then day 184, they didn't even speak to each other at the fair. Meanwhile, while all this was taking place after day 162 after the failed proposal, Dane was kind of a mess and definitely not focused on Maru. On day 163, Emily invited him to a movie to cheer him up and it ended up being a really great date. Day 168, Dane ended up talking with Shane and Emily and watched the jellies with them instead of Maru and her family. Day 169, Dane had a very fun time with Emily and Shane and later that evening things really heated up with Emily. Then fast forward to the fair, because 
because Dean and Maru didn't talk, he just kind of talked to everyone else and just tried to keep his mind off of what had just transpired over the last few weeks. On day 191, Dane almost proposed, but then Shane invited Dane to a gridball game, and there was a moment of doubt. On day 194, Dane proposed to Emily. Now we know what happened, day 197, Dane and Emily got married and it seemed like they were going to live happily ever after. But then, 300 days of Stardew Valley Beach Farm happened. Stay tuned.